Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akirishin. You are looking at the Messerschmitt ME-209A Tier 8 German fighter. This fighter uses auto cannons, is stated to have low survivability with a vulnerable engine, but has high air speed and accelerates quickly when boosting. It has good maneuverability, which is not to say high maneuverability or very high maneuverability. And it is very effective in intercepting aircraft at high altitude. The 209A features two 20mm cannons, each of which do 95 damage per second with a rate of fire of 400 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 780 meters. It also has a very powerful 30mm cannon, which does 140 damage per second with a rate of fire of 60 rounds per minute. Certainly not a fast firing uh, cannon. And effective firing range of 950 meters, which is very good. This aircraft is at specialist level, and I have equipped it with the advanced gyroscopic sight, which increases accuracy of forward firing offensive weapons by 11%. Increases chance of inflicting critical damage by 5% and increases accuracy when firing at moving targets, which is very useful at 5%. We do suffer a 9% decrease in our pilot's resistance to injuries, but we do ameliorate that somewhat with the emergency medical kit as a consumable, which heals our injured pilot and provides our pilot resistance to injury for 10 seconds thereafter. Your other choice would have been cockpit armor, which increases the crew's resistance to injuries, but you lose aircraft maneuverability, and I just don't like to air lose maneuverability in a fighter. I think maneuverability is the lifeblood of a fighter, and so very hesitant to uh, lose any maneuverability. For the airframe, I have equipped improved lightweight wing frame, which increases roll maneuverability by 10.5%, which is very important for this aircraft. It increases maneuverability in turns by 2%, but you do suffer a 3.4% decrease in hit points and a 6% decrease in wings resistance to critical damage. But of course, the more maneuverable your aircraft is, with being able to roll and maneuver, the less it's going to be hit, and therefore the less you need hit points. Your other options would be reinforced skin, which increases the wings and tails resistance to critical damage, but you lose aircraft speed. That's one of this aircraft's strengths, it's a higher speed, so you don't want to you know nerf that. Reinforced airframe, which increases aircraft hit points, but you lose maneuverability. No advantage in that, in my opinion. You also could have chosen polished skin, which increases aircraft speed, but again, you lose aircraft maneuverability. Uh, of course, I've already explained, don't want to do that. For our engine, went with improved lightweight power unit, which increases yaw maneuverability by 4%. Not very useful. Uh, don't do a lot of yawing. Increases maneuverability in turns by 1.8% and acceleration without the boost by 1%, but you do have an 8% decrease in the engine's resistance to critical damage. I do somewhat ameliorate that, though, with the fact that I have equipped as a consumable emergency engine restart, which in repairs a damaged engine. By the way, even though we may have lost some degree of resistance to damage to wings and tails with our airframe choice. I did try to improve that situation with secondary control system which restores controllability of wings and tail. Forgot to mention that. Your other choices would have been engine armor protection which increases engine resistance to damage but you do lose aircraft speed. Again that's one of this aircraft's strengths so I didn't want to nerf that. Combined injection boost system, which increases boost efficiency, but the boost is less available. Didn't want to do that. I, I think it's important to have that boost available as often as possible. Because this is a specialist aircraft, we have another slot for the engine, 
which I put in uh, a stock uprated engine, which increases acceleration without the boost by 2% and increased speed by 1%, but it does increase our engine, our plane's resistance to fire. Your other options would have been engine armor protection, which again I didn't want, or combined injection boost system. Uh, as I explained, I don't want that either. For forward firing weapons, I equipped the stock long gun barrel, which increases firing range of forward firing offensive armament by 4%. You do have a 3% decrease in burst length, but it's really nice to have that extra firing range and I think you'll you'll see that when I feature this aircraft in combat later on in the video. We're able to strike aircraft, enemy aircraft from a pretty good distance. Your option, other options would have been reinforced bolt carriers, which increases berth length, but at the cost of firing accuracy. Uh, you really need firing accuracy with this aircraft, especially with the uh, larger cannon. Uh, it can sometimes be a little difficult to hit uh, enemy targets with these cannons so you don't want to lose accuracy. Or you could have chosen gas operated action which increases the rate of fire but again you lose firing accuracy. So I just didn't want to lose the accuracy there. For our engine slot uh, we do in addition to emergency engine restart system which again repairs a damaged engine we also got emergency engine cooling which improves the engine cooldown rate by five times for 10 seconds. That's really nice to have when you need to pick up some speed. For ammunition, went with universal ammunition, which increases chance of causing fire, inflicting critical damage. In terms of pilot skills, I have our specialist pilot, uh, Oberleutnant Charlotte von Stoffen. And she has two special skills, one of which is Dazzling Star, which increases the range at which enemy aircraft are detected by 40%, and the range at which the aircraft is detected by enemy aircraft by 10%. I'll take the 10% in return for the 40%. That's a pretty good deal, I think. And it's nice to see those aircraft from a greater distance and kind of plan your approach. Also, she has a wonderful skill, Celestial Fury. In a head-on attack, the pilot fires at the most vulnerable sections of an enemy aircraft, improves the chance of causing critical damage to an enemy aircraft and setting it on fire, and increases the damage caused in a head-on attack by 20%. You know, you get so many head-on attacks in this game, it is a really nice skill to have. So I definitely enjoy having Charlotte as my pilot. Aerodynamics Expert which increases the positive effect of the mounted equipment on aircraft maneuverability and speed by 40%. So, you know, I always try to have good synergy between our chosen equipment, consumables, and pilot skills, so they all kind of work together. An aerodynamics expert really does that. Also, we have aerobatics expert, which increases maneuverability in all axes by 2%. So it provides a significant advantage in close maneuvering combat. In terms of the aircraft specifications, we'll get all this expanded here for you. It is supposed to be a high altitude fighter, so its maximum optimal altitude is 2,500 meters, which is not too bad. Service ceiling is 4,500 meters. Rate of climb 147 meters per second, which is pretty good. Average time to turn 360 degrees, 9.8 seconds, not too bad for a German fighter. Boost duration is 10 seconds, so that's not too shabby. A lot of fighters have six, you know, the Japanese have six, a lot of other aircraft have eight, so it's the 10 is a pretty, pretty good uh, boost duration there. A boost speed, we get up to 760 kilometers per hour. Cruising speed, 570, excuse me, 507 kilometers per hour. Optimal distance, 
is 988 meters for firing our forward firing offensive weapon. Cumulative damage is 330 damage per second. Of course, one of the really nice things about German aircraft are their paint schemes. I really like German paint schemes. They do a good job with that. You're currently looking at summer. This is winter. Kind of blah for the winter. Desert. And finally, marine. Now, I wish that this aircraft had the camo schemes for the BF-109B, which is really nice. Look at that for desert. But sadly, ME-209A doesn't quite have those lovely paint schemes, but still not bad. All right, so, and of course, we also have our Lucky 13, which I always put on the German aircraft. Well, let's head into a battle and see how the ME-209A performs with uh, my build. All right, so we'll be fighting in our ME-209A over the Northern Bridgehead Valhalla Theater of Operation. We will head first to the garrison and then on to the command center, and from the command center to the forward airstrip, assuming we're still breathing at that point. Attention, you are entering the combat zone. Get ready for battle. Good luck. ME-209, lovely looking aircraft. One of my favorite planes, for Pilots, sure. Get ready for action. Let's go. All right, so we'll target this light aircraft first. A little rolling here so we stay behind this. I wouldn't do anything that decreases this aircraft's accuracy because it can sometimes be a little difficult to hit things. Here we go. All right, so, oh, looks like we have some company. Kinda hurt. Had a little help there, which was nice. And I don't know who I want to shoot at here. Used to be a target rich environment. This cannon's overheat quickly. Okay. Looks so like we're doing okay so far. Don't have the airfield yet. 
So, yeah, it looks like we don't have the command center yet. Might be a good idea to go ahead and try to secure the command center, which will ultimately make it a little easier to, uh, get the uh, this guy's on fire there we go jet very maneuverable jet See if I can get him before they get us. Ugh. Maybe we can outroll this. Is it Japanese? Yeah, boy, that guy is just causing us a lot of problems. out. There we go. Maybe together we can get this guy. Whew. That's close. still don't have the airfield and we still don't have the command center if we could get the airfield then we'll be a lot closer to the command center it'll be easier to take it and easier to keep it looks like we've got some bombers there got a fighter up here that is working on our uh... oh they got him good all right let's head over to this command center after we take care of this multi roll down here Pilot was injured there, but we've got that skill that helps us to And we finally got the airfield I Wish it was a heal. So what I'm gonna do here Is I am gonna crash So we can get a full health aircraft back before we uh lose that airfield or before we lose the uh, squall line and we'll head over here and see if we can't get this command center oh finally they got it now we just need to defend There's the airfield Clock, let us back in. Air supremacy achieved. Good range, huh? That's 
what help, helps having those long Keep barrels. Victory is almost ours. I'll leave that jet alone. It'll take us forever to try to kill it. Victory is ours. We're waiting for your return. All right. Victory. Three Chevrons on the grade rank. Number one spot on the team. Pretty good showing there for the ME209A. Let's head back to the after action report. Take a look. See how we did overall. Okay, so looking at the after action report, uh, 94,000 and change in currency. Very good here, over 11,000 in experience points. That was excellent. And 580 in free experience points. A couple of medals were added. Uh, effective fire and Flying start. 12 kills. Shot down three times. Did get the Avenger accolade, so one of those uh, aircraft that had shot us down, we were able to shoot down subsequently, which is very nice. Always like to get that. Captured three sectors. Over 9,600 in combat points. And number one spot there on the team. So yeah, very good result there for the ME 209A. One of my favorite aircraft for sure. Sharp looking plane. Alright, so I hope that you have really enjoyed this video, and if you get the opportunity to fly the ME-209A, especially if you can get it to specialist level, then I hope you have great success in it.